OK, I'd like to give you a short demonstration on the use of groups and groupings in Moodle. This presentation is, or this demonstration is going to show you how to set up groups in your course, how to add students to the groups, and how to use these groups so that they can have discussions privately with each other, just the students in that group uh, have their own discussions. Groupings are quite separate. Groupings are groups of groups, as it were. Uh, so we'll set you, we'll show you how to set up groups in your groupings in your course, and to put particular groups into those groupings, and then to use those groupings to selectively assign particular items in your course to particular groupings, so that they're available to that grouping and not available to other groupings. Okay, let's go about doing that. Now let's have a look up here at uh, look, a nice demo course here, Foundations of Knitting. Okay, and first of all what we need to do is we need to uh, set up some groups in the course. So let's go to Groups over here on the left in the Administration block, Groups. And you see I have a couple of groups set up there, Group A and B. So how did I do this? Let's set up Group C and D now. So we need to create a group, we we'll call that Group C. Okay, just a little extra bit of information here. If you set up group, by the way, you can give it an enrollment group key. So we'll say Foundation Knitting C, FNC. So that when students enroll for the course themselves, they'll automatically go into that group if they use that particular enrollment key. Okay, so we've Group C set up. And what we need to do is add a few users to that group. Okay, as you see I have some sample students set up here and as you might guess we'll take student C1 and C2 and we'll add those to group C. Okay, let's just do that quickly. No, I think we have enough there, okay? Uh, right, so how would we use a group? Well, one way to use a group is in a discussion area. Okay, so we have this discussion item here, Angora versus Kashmir, which is the best wool for her. Okay, and uh, let's see now. Let's update the settings on this forum. Okay, and it's down here we do this. We have to decide here whether there's going to be no groups, separate groups, or visible groups. So other, other than everything else in setting up a discussion area, nothing else really changes except you have to decide on this. If you have no groups, it means that uh, everybody will be able to see the full discussions in this forum. And of course, everybody will get sent out the emails from this forum, which can be a little bit troublesome if you've got very large class groups, okay? If we set visible groups, okay, when you post here, you will have to be a member of a group and the emails will only go out to the other members of that group. But everyone, if they are peeping in at the forum, they can look in at all the, all the contributions in every group. If you want to keep them completely separate, you pick separate groups, and that means that only, uh, that emails will go out to everybody in the group, but if you go in there, you can only see the postings from your group. So let's just leave it at that as it was before, separate groups. Okay, now in order to try this out, we need to make a posting. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna log in as one of the participants. Let's log in as student C2. Okay. Log in as student C2, and this is what student C2 is now. They go here. And they've noticed that there are separate groups up here. By the way, if they were a member of several groups, there'd be a little bit of a drop-down menu up here, which they could they could use. Add a new discussion item. Okay. So, what needles should I use for scarves? That's the subject. Okay, this person wants to know what needles to use with scarves, but he's just using his own group. That's all he can send it to. 
It's group C listed down here. So we post that to forum and that will go out to all members of group C. Okay, now what I want to do here is I want to show you that, let's log back in as myself here for a second. Uh, just say as we, if we go in, I'm logged back in as myself by the way, I can see everything there. This was previously posted for group A, that's posted for group C. Let's go and become a, let's say student A1. And I will log in as them. And let's look at this. Student A1 can only see the discussions from group A about which wool is best. They can't see the other discussion. So it hides the discussion. Okay, so that's groups. That's, that's how you set up groups, add members to it and uh, set up a discussion area or, or change an existing discussion area so that it is only visible to particular groups. Okay, what about groupings? Now groupings, the purpose of using groupings is so that you can selectively assign particular activities or resources, items, we'll say. Okay, now I better log back in as myself here. Okay, so let's go to groups. And here you will find a tab up here called groupings. Okay, I have a couple of groupings set, set up there already. Uh, should have been group B only, that contains just group B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a grouping, that grouping. Remember a grouping is a set of groups. So you could have more than one group in it, but we could actually, we can set up groupings that have just one group in them. Let's call this uh, Group C and no one else. Just to show you, you can put any name on it you like. Okay, save changes. And the other ones I said Group A only, and this one I misspelled Group B only. So just so you can put any name on it. But the name should give us some indication of what it's for. So this is for Group C and no one else, this grouping. But there are no groups in it yet. So, uh, or there's nobody in this grouping yet, so we better put group C into it. So there, let me just do that again. I did a bit quickly over here on the right, you'll see show groups in the grouping. Okay, there's none. So let's select group C and add this. So all the people from group C are in grouping C or, and no one else. Okay, let's see that now. Back to groupings. There they are. Okay, right. Let's now pick one of the items on this. Say, for instance, this quiz here. We only wanted to give this to group C, which puts group C into grouping C, and that allows us to do that. So just let's click on this. Let's turn editing on, uh, which is just out of your visibility there. Just over here, turn editing on. Okay. Quiz on wall and entrepreneurship, another misspelling there, but let's just edit the settings on that quiz. Let's go down here to grouping. Okay, available for group members only. Click and let's put group C and no one else. Okay, that's the name of the grouping. Okay, save and return to course. Now, You'll see here that this quiz on wool and entrepreneurship has this grade out here. The students won't see that, but that allows you, the teacher, to know that only group C and no one else, that grouping, can see it. Okay, so let's just test that. Let's, um, let's go in as a uh, participants. Um, let's pick one of the students group, student C1. Okay, we'll log in as C1 because we know he's a member of groups. Groupings, group C, which is in grouping C. So let's see, and sure enough, that person can see the qu quiz on wool and entrepreneurship. Actually, you may have noticed it, or you may not, but there was a, an item just before that, I think it was for group B, and we can't see that now because it's for group B only. Let's go back. There it was, it was group A only. So let's uh, become one of group A now. Okay, participants. Student A1, log in as student A1, continue. Okay, now you'll know that we can't see 
the quiz on wool and entrepreneurship. But we can see this one, submit assignment number one, because that was just for grouping A. Okay, so what have we learned here? That uh, uh, you can use groupings and you can put groups into it, one or more groups into it, and then you can use those groupings to selectively uh, make available an individual item to a particular grouping in the course. Previous to that, we learned how to create groups and to use those for separating, I suppose, discussions in the course and how to put students into groups. I hope that you found that useful and you'll come back for more videos soon. Okay, bye now.